you know, the city council approved this, so I mean, how do we address change, real reform in the town of the city, the Cicero? Well, I'll tell you, by, by getting a clean slate in there, we need an entire new board. Uh, these board members that are left over, council members, are from the last administration. Uh, you know, it's always been somebody scared to stand up to the town president. Well, I can tell you that we're running a very independent slate here. I don't expect anybody on the council to be a yes man or a yes woman for me. I expect them that if the decision that I'm asking to be made is wrong, that they challenge me and that they make their argument why we shouldn't do what we're doing. But we need to have independent voices on this council so that we don't have a rubber stamp and that we just go down the road thinking what we're doing is right without any opposition. And what is the population of Cicero? Population by census, I believe, is somewhere in the neighborhood of 70,000. Mm -hmm. uh, but on our undocumented population here in Cicero, we're probably closer to 100,000 people here in this town. Most densely populated community in all of Cook County. And how many registered voters have you? Uh, there's about 28,000 registered voters. Of that, the uh, Latino makeup is about 70%. And you're running as a voice of change in the township of Cicero. Uh, who are some of those that have come out and supported you in your campaign for president of the township? Well, the first one to come out was uh, Commissioner Frank Avila, who is a commissioner at the Water Reclamation District of Greater Cook County. Uh, I've also had Commissioner Tony Pareka, who's been a huge reformer at the county level, uh, come out and endorse me. I also have the endorsement of Congressman Luis Gutierrez, who is a congressman for the 4th Congressional District, who has also come out to support me. And what, what, what date will the election be held out here in Cicero? The election will be on February 24th, and the polls will be open from 6 a.m. to 7 p.m. Uh, people can come out all day and cast their ballots. And if someone's out there watching this show and they want to volunteer for your campaign, how can they get in touch with you? Uh, they can call our office at 708. 863-2009. If they'd like more information, they can go to our website at cec2009.com or they can come down to our office at 5816 West Cermak Road in Cicero, Illinois. Repeat that one more time for those slow listeners. You know, we, we reach about three million people, so we got some slow people out there. <laughs> Coach, I'll tell you one more time. That phone number here is 708-863-2009. Our address is 5816 West Cermak Road in Cicero, Illinois, and our website is www.cec.com. And I was looking over your bio, and I see that you work in law enforcement, so by natural trade, you're in the business of helping people. Absolutely. I'll tell you, when I became a law enforcement officer, that was my primary reason was to help others. Uh, sure, and part of that is arresting criminals, but it's also uh, listening to people's concerns, uh, ways that they feel we can be helpful in the community and combat crime, uh, what, you know, listening to their voices when they have inside information. It's all part of being a police officer. And, you know, when we were growing up as kids, we had an officer friendly, so I know you're officer friendly out there. Uh, I'll tell you, unfortunately, that's a political position in this town, and I've never had the pleasure of serving as an officer friendly. Uh, I think they feel that that would have given me way too much exposure with the young men and women of this community, and therefore they, uh, that's something that I would, they, they, a position they'd never like to leave here at this time. You know, being a coach, I deal with a lot of youth. What, what, what is your campaign doing to reach out to those young voters, which is really a group of voters that's taken for granted, but at the same time, made a big influence in Barack Obama's election. Well, I'll tell you what, we've done what we can do here. Uh, of course, we always hit some bumps in the roads. This is Cicero. Uh, what we've done is I've had some of the younger kids that are uh, working here on the campaign. They created a MySpace for me. Uh, I have a Facebook uh, in which I, where I communicate with a lot of young college kids, uh, which is what we call the Obama group. Uh, this is the voters that got Obama, Barack Obama, like the president. Uh, and uh, I've met with them. I've met with young college kids. I've tried to let them know what my platform is, let them know that what I'm doing here is what they represent. That's what we want to build. We want to send more kids to college. We want to bring up the drop. We want to lower the dropout rate here. We want more kids to go to community college, to go on to universities and finish their four years degree. That's what this campaign's about. Um, the word spreads like wildfire amongst the young. I'll tell you, I met with a group of uh, maybe 10 or 15 kids just two weeks ago. 
and these are all young kids, either at U of I, DePaul, great universities, and uh, through them, I mean, my Facebook has just exploded uh, from different kids that, have, that they've made contact with, that they, that they say, listen, Mr. Garcia is real, he's about change, he's the real deal, we need to get out, we need to support him, uh, and, and he's so right, we need that young Latino vote. Uh, we need them to get out and cast their ballots uh, on Tuesday, February 24th, and that's going to be the vote that puts us over the top. And I know with the young group, there's also the senior citizen group, which is, for politicians, probably the most dependable voting block. So what are you doing to reach out to those senior citizens? I tell you, we've been by the senior centers. Uh, there's two senior centers here in town, um, Alden Manor, and uh, the other one is uh, 55th Court. I don't remember the name of that one, but I, I, I'll tell you that we uh, have reached out to let them know that uh, the best tool that I have are my ears. I'll be there to listen to their needs and to be there to help them in any way we can. I can tell you that Cicero has some, has some great senior citizen programs uh, in snow removal, grass maintenance, uh, you know, driving them to their doctor's appointments and groceries. And I want the seniors to know that this is something that existed before this administration got there. It will continue to exist on my watch, and we'll try to expand and enhance those programs in any way that we can. And I know one of the biggest cries out among people today is jobs with the economy. What is your vision to create jobs in the Cicero community? Well, first of all, uh, the workforce that is here in Cicero, there's a lot of people who don't reside in the town of Cicero. Uh, we'll be looking to see who's having this administration that does not live here and we'll be looking to either get them to move into town or we'll be applying the ordinance that exists that says you must live in a town or be terminated. Uh, all of that seems harsh. It's, it's harsher on the people of this community that when they go to apply for jobs, they're told that there is no jobs available. Jobs for this community should be available to the community. Uh, we also need to support uh, business and commerce here. We have to support our, our mom and pa shops. We have to get out here. Let them know that uh, there's TIF dollars available. We need to expand these tips. We'll look to expand them. Uh, but we need to let them know that we're here to support them to help their business grow. Because as their business grows, it creates more jobs for the community. And on a closing note, uh, you're running, I assume this is, is this your first run for no, elected actually, office? I was, no, I was elected. I've uh, also run for state senator. I was elected to the, that was uh, in 2002. I ran for state senator and I did 38% <laughs> against uh, sitting senator Martin Sandoval. I also uh, ran for school board the following year where I was elected for a four-year term from 03 to 07. Uh, I also defeated Larry Dominic in that election by over 2,000 votes here in Cicero uh, with ballots cast in Cicero. So we know that we, we, I've beaten Larry Dominic before and I know I can beat him again. Uh, the last office I ran for was committeeman uh, against Charlie Hernandez and I missed that by 300 votes. So you sound like you're pretty popular out here. Well, I'll tell you what, I try to stay active out here and let people know who I am. Uh, unfortunately, uh, it, it gets hard, it gets hectic with a job and a family. Uh, you know, we try to, I try to service the community in any way that I can. When people call and they have a problem, I try to address it. Well, we know this is political season and the coach is on the road. And because it's political season, we go give us here the final words to address his fans out there. I want to say to you, I'd like to say to all the people watching this video, if you want change, if you want to end all the uh, nepotism, the, the injustices that exist here in, in Cicero, the two-level uh, system of justice, those who know someone and those who don't, you need to come out on February 24th and cast your ballot for Roberto Garcia. Uh, it's punch four. We have a slate. If you want to volunteer, we've given that information out. 708-863-2009 uh, is the number. Our, we are located at 5816 West Cermak Road. Uh, please call us. Uh, we'd love to have you aboard. This is a campaign of inclusion, and we want to make sure anybody who wants to be part of this change comes out and that we make them a part of it. Thank you. And the, the coach stand corrected. I've been saying Robert Garcia is Roberto Ebonic, so <laughs> Ebonic version for all Robert my fans Roberto out there. Semantics, <laughs> semantics, coach semantics. Talk to me with the coach, Edward Garcia, the next town president for Cicero.